Welcome to Chemistry with Caroline. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to draw resonance structures and the accompanying arrows to show the movement of electrons for a negatively charged molecule. So negatively charged molecules tend to throw students more than positively charged molecules do. The first step is to identify where to start. So in a charged molecule, the location of the charge is usually where you're going to start and where the electrons are going to flow to or from. So here we have a molecule with a negative oxygen. This oxygen has got three lone pairs of electrons and one bond, so it has a full octet. It can't receive any more electrons without exceeding the octet rule. It can, however, donate electrons to the ring. So I'm going to start my arrow at a lone pair of the electrons on the oxygen, and I'm going to fold them down to make a double bond right there between the oxygen and the carbon on the ring. Now I can't stop there because I will exceed the octet rule for that carbon atom, and so when I push this lone pair of electrons down, this pi bond is going to come out as a lone pair of electrons. My starting material here, the starting structure, was negatively charged, and so each resonance structure should be negatively charged as well. So essentially, in the resonance structure I'll draw now, the negative charge is localized on a carbon atom instead of on an oxygen atom. Once you're in the ring, you're able to push the electrons around a, a benzene ring, and so my arrow will start at this lone pair of electrons, it will end in the middle of that bond right there, and again, to not break the octet rule, these electrons will come out as a lone pair on the carbon that's opposite of where the oxygen atom is attached on the ring. So these are resonance arrows that I'm drawing here. Now I have a negatively charged carbon on the bottom of the ring. Those electrons can fold in to form a double bond, these will fold out. I'm going to sort of draw this one looking like this so we can go down. And then if I push those all the way around, my negative charge is going to end up back on the oxygen atom. And now I've gone all the way around the ring. Another common question is, how do I know when I'm done? Well, when you end up back outside of a ring, then you're done when it comes to these cyclic structures. So you'll, you'll run into something that will inhibit resonance structures being formed, or you'll end up back where you started. And with the case of cyclic structures, often you end up back where you started. Now, the molecule itself is not really any one of these individual Lewis structures that I've drawn here. It's a weighted average of all of them. And so a limitation of Lewis structures is how well it is able to show how electrons are shared. The overall character of this molecule is that there's more electron density at these positions adjacent to the carbon with the oxygen on it and across from it. And we can see that in our resonance structures, right? So like here is on the left hand side of it, here is on the bottom of it, and here's on the right hand side of it. And those would correspond to those partial negative charges right there. So usually when you have a negative charge uh, that you're moving around a ring or, or a structure, you're going to move two pairs of electrons at a time unless you're just folding it into an empty p orbital in the form of a carbocation. So this has been a look at how to draw resonance structures in negatively charged molecules. Remember, start where the charge is and don't exceed the octet rule for second row elements. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Thanks!